I recently published a video where I ranked every aspect of the audio chain from your amplifier, your cables, your high res audio, and all the way up in S tier above all the rest. I ranked EQ. Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is super review. And in my opinion, EQ is S tier because you can use EQ to make a $100 audio chain sound literally better than a $10,000 audio chain. Because the thing that matters more than the number of drivers in your IM or the, the cost of your amplifier or planar versus dynamic, the thing that matters more than all of that stuff is the frequency response that reaches your eardrum. And EQ allows you to manipulate that in a way that's a lot more precise and personal than anything a headphone manufacturer out there can do. Now, there is a learning curve to using EQ effectively. But if you wanna get the absolute best quality audio out there possible, learning how to EQ is gonna unlock that in a way that spending tens of thousands of dollars never will. And in this episode of Waveguide or this series of Waveguide videos, I'm gonna show you how, starting with the basics. If you like the idea of helpful content like this, well, I guess a shout out to our sponsor, Hi-Fi Go. Hi-Fi Go is making Waveguide possible, as well as making Hi-Fi just affordable and attainable for everyone. If you wanna show your support, I've got them linked down below. But with that said, let's dive into the basics. All right, for the basics, I wanna dive into kind of two main subtopics. One, let's zero in on this idea of frequency response at the eardrum. What do I mean by this and how does EQ play a part? And then two, we're gonna go over some types of EQ because EQ doesn't mean one thing. There's some versions of EQ that even normal people encounter. And then there's some versions that frankly, only audio nerds like us ever deal with and they're not all created equal. So we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of them. But to start with, frequency response of the eardrum, what do I mean? Here's a diagram that hopefully helps you understand. Um, let's start over here on the left. We've got our content, right? It could be your music from Spotify, your own music library, um, or it could be a video game. It could be a movie. This is the original content material that for illustration purposes, let's just describe as a flat frequency response. Now, that content gets passed to your source, your amplifier, your DAC, your cables, and generally the frequency response of that stuff is also flat, right? There is a lot of science and technology and effort that goes into making sure that your sources are just passing through a neutral transparent signal to your headphone. But unfortunately, this is where things get complicated and messy. Um, because headphones, IMs, they all have different frequency responses, all right? Um, and this is why different headphones sound different. When you put them on your head, they're gonna sound different to you because they all have different frequency responses. Now, there's some science and research behind like trying to find the ideal neutral transparent frequency response of a headphone, but there's some problems here. One, very few headphones achieve it. Two, there's not actually a lot of agreement about what the ideal frequency response of a headphone is. And three, well, that's because of the HRTF effect, okay? Uh, I know this is a very technical sounding term that just means head-related transfer function, which doesn't actually help. What this means is th this is basically accounting for the effect that your own human anatomy has on the frequency response as it comes out of the headphone, all right? Sound comes out of the headphone, it hits your head, and depending on how wide your head is, how large your head is, how big your ears are, how wide or narrow your ear canals are, all of this has an effect on the sound that eventually reaches your eardrum. And this is frankly why a lot of people will hear the same headphone or the same IM and have pretty different responses to that headphones because, well, they're actually hearing something different by the time it reaches their eardrum. And this is this, again, this idea of frequency response of the eardrum is that it's starting as kind of like this flat signal. It's getting transformed by the headphone and your HRTF. And by the time it reaches your eardrum, well, it no longer looks exactly the way that it started. But this is where EQ comes into play. So let me scroll over here to this other version of the diagram where I've inserted EQ. And what EQ lets us do is basically take that flat frequency response of the original content and manipulate it in a way that takes into consideration the transformation that's about to occur once that sound gets passed on to your headphone and then goes through your own human anatomy. The goal being that by the time the frequency response reaches your eardrum, the thing that you actually hear, it's a closer approximation of the original content. It's closer to a neutral transparent source, or maybe it's got a little bit of extra bass boost in there, whatever it is that you prefer. The goal is that by the time the sound goes through this transformation, we've manipulated it with EQ so that this is ideal. All right, so next I wanted to give you kind of an overview of the different types of EQ. Like I mentioned, EQ doesn't mean just one thing. There's different ways to do EQ. They all have different pros and cons. So let's start by just talking about this, which is generic EQ presets. This is the most common version of EQ, 
but also probably the least useful. You've probably seen it in the form of like jazz, rock, and pop presets. Maybe they appear in like your, your favorite music app. Um, the pro is that they're easy to use, right? You just select it, it changes the sound. Uh, the con is that, again, I think they're mostly useless because, well, unless the software is like software that came with your headphone, the EQ is not tuned for your headphone and it's not gonna be tuned for any particular target frequency response, like jazz, rock, and pop are not agreed upon frequency responses. Um, and it's also not gonna have any of your own personal preference baked into it. So generally, these things are not very useful. I mean, if you like them, feel free to use them, but I'm gonna give you an analogy uh, for all of these. And, and for me, the analogy with generic presets is that it's like you're eating some food and somebody just adds random amounts of salt sugar, fish, or milk to your, to your food, kind of regardless of what you're eating. Is it gonna make it taste better? Ah, probably not, maybe, maybe randomly it will, but probably it won't be that useful. But that'll bring us on to our next form of EQ. And this one is also fairly common out there in the normal world, and I will actually say, actually kind of useful. And this is tone controls. And by this, I mean like knobs and sliders that let you adjust the bass, mids, and treble, right? You might see these things on a car stereo, maybe your home stereo has them, or there's some like audiophile equipment like the shit Loki that gives you these tone controls. Now, what's nice about these is it's nice and easy to use. There's no software involved, it's just hardware. And you can still personalize it to your own headphone, your own preferences, like you get plenty of control. Maybe a pro or a con here is that you do have to know what your preferences are, and I know that is not that is not a given, honestly, in this hobby. But if you know what your preferences are, that's absolutely a pro. Uh, but the biggest con with using tone controls like these is that they're just not very precise, right? You only get maybe two sliders, maybe five sliders. Um, and so kind of my analogy here is that, well, you get to cook whatever you want, but you only have kind of a a set number of ingredients that you get to pick from. So tone control is pretty good, but pretty limited. Moving on to our next form of EQ, and this is one that's growing in popularity, which is auto EQ, all right? Uh, you'll find this in some audio file software like Rune, even PowerAmp has auto EQ in it now. Um, or you might find you know, there's a subreddit that Oratory has that's dedicated to talking about auto EQ profiles. Um, and some apps will actually make this pretty easy to use where you basically just select your headphone, right? Whether it's a Sony XM, the XM5, and you, you get an auto EQ profile that's going to make that headphone sound better. So what's nice about this is that it is tailored for your specific headphone. Um, and it's gonna be tuned to probably the Harman target or maybe tuned to JM1 neutral target. Now. There's a good thing and a bad thing about this, right? Like if you don't have your own preferences or you don't know what your preferences are, you might, this is basically just gonna make a lot of headphones probably sound better. Um, and you don't really have to think about it too much. Now, the downside is that if your preference isn't the Harman Target or JM1, well, you don't get a whole lot of choice in the matter. The other thing is maybe a smaller point, but this is gonna get into the fine detail of making EQ, EQ sound the best for you, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't incorporate your own HRTF, right? Those HRTF effects, your own human anatomy. Well, this is a general profile that is designed for your headphone, yes, but it's designed for kind of the generic uh, measurement rig to sound ideal, which your HRTF is probably, probably gonna be a little bit different. So um, I would say that an analogy for this is that like, using an auto EQ profile is like having a chef prepared meal that might be perfect out of the box, but you don't really have a whole lot of choice in it. So they're serving up Harman Target every time. Um, but again, it probably is gonna sound better than your bass headphone. But that will lead us into the two forms of EQ that frankly this series is gonna focus the most on, which is just full parametric EQ, um, starting with this, this one, which is just an automatic version of this. This is, this is something you can find in tools like Squigglink, um, which is not super easy to use, but it's also not that hard to learn, right? So basically what this does is it takes the frequency response of a headphone or an IEM, and it takes a target, and it automatically generates a frequency response for that target. Now, the pros are the one that this is matched to your headphone, um, and it's also matched to your preference in that you get to pick which target, which could be a standard neutral target like Harman, could be my neutral target, or you could even target another headphone to make one headphone sound like another headphone. 
A con of this is that it doesn't, you know, it's still not going to include your own HRTF in the calculation because it's just doing a calculation based on measurements that don't include your head. Another potential con is that you might generate a little bit of overconfidence with this, right? There's no real guardrails, right? There's no expert in the loop generating this. Whereas with the auto EQ profiles, you've got kind of like these tastemakers that are very purposely putting together these EQ profiles. When you do something like this, well, there's some error in the measurements. There's some error in the targets and in the calculation of all this stuff. And well, you're just going to end up with that error if you don't correct for it. Um, still pretty good, but there's going to be, again, there's no guardrails. And then the other big con here is just that it might change more than you want, right? Maybe you like the way that your headphone sounds, but you just want to correct a couple of small things. This is going to pretty drastically change the sound signature of your headphone. Um, so if you want to have more fine grain control, doing an automatic parametric EQ isn't necessarily going to be the best way to do that. My analogy here is that Doing this is kind of like ordering food on DoorDash, right? You can kind of order whatever you want, but it's going to come as is and it might arrive a little bit scuffed. Uh, but that will lead us into talking about our final form of EQ, which is full manual parametric EQ. Um, and this is basically what you're going to get access to when you use a lot of the tools that we're going to talk about in our next video. Um, but you can also use tools like Squiggling to do this kind of parametric manual EQ. This is the most precise, flexible solution that's going to give you the highest ceiling in terms of sound quality because it's going to be personalized to your headphone, it's going to be personalized to your own target response, whatever you're going after, as well as your own personal HRTF. This is going to be the one that honestly has the steepest learning curve by far. Um, but once you figure it out, if you know what your, your preferred sound signature is, this is the one that's going to give you the most flexibility to achieve it. My analogy here is you've got total freedom to cook and you've got access to every ingredient you can imagine. And I guess before we move on, here's a quick kind of overview of those different types of uh, EQ that we just talked about. Generic presets, again, easy to use. My rating is dog poop, um, just because it's not customized to your headphone, your target response or HRTF. Tone controls. Pretty easy to use and also pretty good because you can customize them to all these aspects of it. You just don't have a lot of fine grain controls. You got limited ingredients. Auto EQ, again, also very, actually pretty easy to use. Um, generally pretty good as well, you know, because you can customize it to your headphone, even if you don't get to necessarily pick your, your custom target or personalize it to your own head. Uh, and then finally, the, the two down here at the bottom, the parametric, the full parametric EQ, options. The automatic version, I think generally pretty easy to use. It is a, still a little bit of a learning curve and we're going to talk about how to do it, but generally it can be pretty good because you can customize it to your headphone, you can customize your target, even if you can't necessarily customize it to your own anatomy. And then finally, the full manual uh, ease of use is, sadly, it's not good, but that's why we're here. That's why we've got this video series because the ultimate rating, the, the, the ceiling on this is the highest. It is the best quality because it can be customized to your headphone, to your target, to your HRTF, and you've got just all of the ingredients at your disposal. So now you've got a pretty good high level understanding of EQ, why it's important and some of the ways that you can do it. The rest of this video series is going to be focused on that last version, parametric EQ. And in the next episode, I'm going to dive into the specific solutions, both the hardware and software that you can use to get full parametric EQ, regardless of which platform you're using. If you're on iOS, Android, Windows, or Mac, we've got solutions that we're going to talk about and I'll show you how to use them. Um, but to do that, I guess you're going to have to subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and join me along with HiFiGo, who is making Waveguide possible. I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers. Reviews, we now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools. Uh, hey, this review is super, and so are you. Grab your headphones, sniff a graph, and share your thoughts in this pursuit. Let's begin with the future.